ATX News Bulletin. That it appears the explosion we have long been fearing has occurred. It was one of the most violent natural events in U.S. history. The 1980 cataclysmic eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Weeks before it blew, volcanologists monitoring Mount St. Helens had been sending out warnings of its imminent eruption. Foremost among them was 30-year-old David Johnston of the U.S. Geological Survey. Volcanologists are scientists who study the formation of volcanoes and their eruptions. Some volcanologists, like Johnston, work close to volcanoes, searching for patterns and clues that can help predict when an eruption might occur. We're not going to have a lot of warning if a final um, big eruption starts. I think probably a day is the outside. It might happen without really telling us it's going to happen. It might just go. On May 18th at 8.32 a.m., an explosive force equal to 24 million tons of TNT blasted out of the mountain, spewing about 500 million cubic meters of ash more than 19 kilometers into the air in a gigantic plume. Sadly, David Johnston was among the 57 people killed in the eruption. While massive eruptions like Mount St. Helens are rare, volcanoes are quite common on Earth's land and on ocean floors. Volcanologists like Patricia Nadeau at the American Museum of Natural History estimate there may be as many as 1,500 active volcanoes on the planet right now. Anything that's erupted in historical times is considered an active volcano. It could just be degassing. It could have a lot of little earthquakes and tremors happening, so we know there's magma underneath the volcano. Volcanoes come in many shapes and sizes, their appearance mostly dictated by the composition and thickness of the lava flowing out of them. The chemistry of the lava that comes out of them will actually dictate what the shape of the volcano is. So a lava that's more runny tends to make something called a shield volcano, which is actually pretty flat. The pointy cones are called stratovolcanoes, and those are made of stickier lava. It has a different chemical composition, so it just doesn't flow as far down the slopes and as far away, so it makes a taller cone. Mount St. Helens is an example of a stratovolcano, and so is another active volcano in Washington State, Mount Rainier. Rainier is considered to be one of the most dangerous volcanoes in North America, threatening the cities of Seattle and Tacoma with obliteration, not from cataclysmic eruption, but from the volcanic mud flow, or lahar, it could unleash. Mount Rainier has a lot of glaciers on top. As soon as there's any hot lava or magma, all those glaciers are gonna start melting and mixing with all the rocks and make this huge mud flow that flows down the slope toward big cities like Tacoma and Seattle. Over 150,000 people live on lahar deposits from Mount Rainier's past eruptions. If the volcano affected that area once in the past, it could again. Because of these risks, volcanologists are closely monitoring Rainier. The volcanologists would know if there was an eruption coming. Volcanologists can determine if a volcano is about to erupt by looking at various types of data, such as rising ground temperatures, an increase in sulfur dioxide gas from the volcano, increased seismic activity in the form of frequent minor earthquakes, and deformation or ballooning of the volcano. Just like blowing air into a balloon will make it inflate, magma moving up inside a volcano is going to make it inflate. Ground deformation is often measured by GPS systems and satellite imagery that document the size and growth speed of the bulge. In the days before Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, volcanologists discovered a bulge on the mountain's north flank that was growing at a rate of one and a half meters per day. The growing pressure of the magma inside would ultimately cause the cataclysmic eruption. Volcanologists learn such valuable information from studying Mount St. Helens and other volcanoes that 11 years later, when Mount Pitatubo erupted in the Philippines, thousands of people had already been safely evacuated. Today, volcanologists continue to monitor and study volcanoes, providing helpful knowledge on possible hazards, when an eruption might occur, and how to respond in a volcanic emergency.